Okay, um, I thought I would show you a few things. Um, my little setup for my uh, crafty get together tomorrow, and a couple other things. Um, and by the way, if you haven't heard before, I have um, I invited YouTube over to my house, basically. <laughs> If you live in the Houston area and are available tomorrow, that is Saturday, June 15th, from about 2-ish to 5-ish, um, you're invited to come over and, and be crafty with me. We're going to make some journals and, and we're just going to visit and just have all kinds of fun. But um, anyway, I got everything set up. I got up early this morning and I should have known better. I thought, okay, first thing this morning, I'll make a video, get that done, get it out of the way. I can't function first thing in the morning. I know this. I don't know what I was thinking. The whole video, every three minutes, my camera kept turning off all by itself, which is frustrating me. I knew there was some setting that I had screwed up somehow, but I couldn't find it. And I complained about it through the whole video. And you know, which was ridiculous. Then I downloaded the whole, all 57 three-minute clips to my computer before I finally figured out, you know, that the setting was wrong. But then when I looked at it, the whole, all of the clips were blurry. I, they were out of focus for some reason. And I just can't tolerate that. I can tolerate the three-minute pause, but not the blurriness. So I should have known better than to try to do anything like that first thing in the morning. So this is my second attempt. I'm going to redo the whole thing. Set up for tomorrow. Um, we're going to make little journals. And I thought we'd just do that here in my dining room because this is my work table anyway. It may look like a formal, you know, dining room table, but it's not. It's my work table. And I've got it set up with these are the little tools and supplies that we'll be using. Oh, oh yeah, that's about right. Now my battery light's flashing. <laughs> okay, I figure out the stupid three-minute thing. I get it focused, and now my battery's dying. You know what? Sometimes the universe tries to tell you things, and you don't listen. And this is what happens. This is what happens. I'm going to change my battery and um, throw something, and then I'll be back. Okay, sorry about that little meltdown, <laughs> but it's good now. I'm better. Um, yeah, I was showing you what we're going to do on Saturday. We're going to make these journals. Um, remember these uh, file folders that I got from Ballard Designs? I think we need to make little junk journals out of those. So that's what we're going to do. Got the stuff out here, and then I've also got stuff... I've got stuff everywhere. But, you know, I can't really work in my art room. I don't have a workspace in there. It's really just more for storage. So I always have to bring my stuff downstairs. And, uh, which is fine. I'm fine with it. You know, at least I have space somewhere to work. So that's all right. So this got this little area. It's got just a few embellishment things and some my image binders and that scrapbook paper and painted papers and those are um, you know paint chips that we can use inside our journals and then I pulled some books from my shelf that we can those are ones we can pull papers from but I've got a whole big shelf of those that we can go to I just put those there for convenience sake and then over here we've got the junky stuff, you know, junk mail, postcards, um, bits and pieces of paper scraps and lace and ribbon and doodads and envelopes and notepads, just all kinds of stuff to use on our pages. So that's what that all is. And then over here I've set up a little area for our that's our cutting and binding station. Yes, that's what that is. Cutting and binding station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there we have it. So, um, that's it. I am so excited. I don't know if you can tell, but I am so excited about tomorrow. And I will show you. I also went shopping. 
So um, I've got a few things to show you that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. But let's do a flip through of the journal right quick so you can see it. I'm going to try to adjust the camera without stopping it. We'll just see how that goes. Um, I think I can do it. But I don't know if it's going to be focused. I think it is. Okay. Let's just go with it. This is the journal that we're going to make out of, let me show you, it's the top folders are like that. They're just cute as can be. So everybody's going to make a little junk journal out of it. And I wanted to use, for the closure, I really, really wanted to use, you know, remember those cardboard buttons that I got with it that were part of the packaging? Uh-huh. Yeah, i got to use those. But then I've got some other little things we can use for closure in case someone wants that. This one was actually, I punched it similar to this button, but it's actually a POG. Remember POGs? I got some from somewhere at some point. I don't know, but I have a little baggie full of these weird POGs. And it was just the right size and shape, so, um, and I didn't want to use up all my black buttons in case someone else wanted those. So I just covered it with some paper and punched holes and used the pog right there. And then I used a little washer, you know, and I don't remember how I did that and I know someone's going to ask. I, I probably need to, I probably need to figure that out because I just tied it and didn't really pay attention. And, uh, but anyway, this is the journal. Inside I, I covered the, uh, this with a piece of, uh, this is a, a page out of an old ledger that I got, I think, off eBay. And the journal has a pocket here and a pocket here for extra papers. And then I just used, you know, scrap papers and notepads and book pages and magazine pages and made extra pockets. And there's some little uh, thingies and some uh, pullouts and some stuff and some post-its and fold-outs. So, yeah, just a variety of doodads for us. Oh, paint chip. These make cute little tags and, of course, it has to be usable. So put some lined paper on the back. And that little thing goes there. There's another tag. So this is just an example. You know, everyone's will be different, but um, I know when I make stuff, I like to have an example to look at sometimes. That helps. So, here we have it. And I always like to keep a few extra sheets of paper in my journals because, you know, I leave I leave papers like this I wouldn't write on. I would probably glue stuff to it. And but I leave plenty of space for writing too. But sometimes I find I need extra writing space. So I keep extra papers in there. So that's what we're gonna do. I hope they like it. I really like it. And it's a simple journal to make. It's nothing fancy. You've probably seen ones like it or similar before. So that's our project. And um, I went shopping. I went to Hobby Lobby yesterday. Hang on. Grab my stuff. And I needed super glue. And the reason that I, sorry, I'm getting it together. The reason that I needed super glue was because of this. I'm almost, well, I'm almost out. And plus, I'll tell you what happens. This right here, you know, where I tie the thing, I like to just put a little super glue right there just to make sure that knot doesn't come undone. And the super glue doesn't show, you know, and it just kind of holds that knot together so that I can trim it really close and um, so it looks neat. So I got my super glue out and I've had it for quite a while. And I buy the kind at Hobby Lobby. You get it over where they have like the model, um, model uh, cars and airplanes and stuff and it, it looks like this they have others but this is the one I prefer and it's got um, they have the thick they have the thin and they have a medium which I see no use for 
Um, and I usually buy the thick, but I sometimes like to have the thin on hand. But what happens is, after a while, it, um, it's a good super glue. And as long as you make sure that there's nothing in the little tip when you're done with it, you know, squeeze it so that it's just air, you know, it doesn't dry out. It'll last forever. You know, I've had bottles for two or three years that are still good, but I noticed that after about a year, it takes them a little longer to dry. I don't know why. Maybe it's my imagination. Maybe it's the humidity finally gets to them. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but they just, they act a little bit different after a while. So I try not to keep them longer than about a year, and then I replace them. But what I also like to use with the super glue, because, you know, super glue dries fast, but it doesn't dry instantly. You have to dab it on, and then you have to kind of blow on it, you know, and give it a minute. Sometimes I just don't have that minute. I want it instantly dry. So you can buy this at Hobby Lobby, too. It comes in a package like this, and it's over with the super glue. And it's called Extreme Power Accelerator for use with APS adhesive products. And it's just this watery stuff. It smells kind of like alcohol. And it comes with a spray thing. And then what you do is when you put your dab your super glue on, you give it one spray of this, that super glue, and you can watch it. It dries instantly. It sets up. This dries it instantly. I can't tell you how instantly this dries it, which means you just really want to make sure that you don't have any on your fingers, when you have any glue on your fingers when you spray this and then get this on your fingers because it bonds instantly and, of course, permanently. But, um, you know, as fast as super glue is, sometimes it's just not fast enough so you can buy this accelerator and I always keep my bottles in a Ziploc baggie because the stuff evaporates. I, really, I don't even know what it's made out of. It doesn't even say. But um, it's got to have some kind of alcohol or something in it because it does start to evaporate. So keep it in a sealed baggie. But if you use super glue quite a bit, like I do, because I break things a lot, this is a good thing to have. I went in for super glue at Hobby Lobby. $100 later, I came out of Hobby Lobby. They had some really good stuff on their clearance aisle. And oh, one of the things, if you're a Copic marker person, you might want to check your Hobby Lobby. I don't know if this will work, but let's just see. I took a picture. Okay. Can you see that? Those are the Copic markers that were on the clearance rack at my Hobby Lobby. There were lots of them. And they were on clearance for $2.51 each. Okay, that's a good price for Copics. Um, I posted this picture on my Facebook page, you know, and told people, hey, run and get your Copics at Hobby Lobby if you need some. And some people um, wrote back and said that they had them at their Hobby Lobby, but their clearance price was like $4 each. Okay, that's not really a clearance. You know, Jerry's Artorama, their everyday price is $5.25 for Copics. They call it a sale, but they've been having that sale for like two years. So I really think it's the regular price. So if regular price is five twenty-five, four bucks is not a clearance. My gosh, what were those? Those Hobby Lobbies are just sad. They need to get with the program. Two fifty-one, that's a bargain. So check your Hobby Lobby if you're a Copic person. I am not. So I left all those Copics at my Hobby Lobby for someone else to grab. Okay. They, their clearance aisle at Hobby Lobby was just an absolute pleasure this time. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's awful. This was a time that was great. I found all kinds of stuff. Um, I also I picked up a bunch of stuff that I needed, you know, some glues and string and consumables that I was out of. But I also found some fun stuff on the clearance aisle. I got some of these um, Distress stickles, glitter glues, and they were $2.15. And I don't use a lot of glitter glues, but, you know, occasionally I, I do want something sparkly. And I've got like two. I have two glitter glues. That's all I own. So now I have five, five whole glitter glues. Woohoo! Yay me. Uh, I also got these. These are not something that I've 
not the kind of thing I buy very often, but they caught my eye because of the colors, and, and there were $2.15, but I thought they kind of, they might look good on my uh, journal somewhere if I get a wild hair and decide to stick flour on there for some reason. So, I got those. I got oh, these because they were just a good price. Erasers, which I do use a lot when I'm doodling. Needed erasers are my favorites, but occasionally I need just a regular dust free. So they had those for a dollar seven. They had I uh, found this um, Liquitex ink in carbon black for two fifty one. So I got that because you know we need that. And they had this, they had several of these, but it was just this style. There weren't any more varieties, and it's the actual Smash brand of their little um, tabs, index tabs. And they were 82 cents. Well, heck yeah, I'll use those for 82 cents. So I grabbed that. I got, <laughs> okay, I don't know why I bought this. I do know why, and I'm glad I bought it. So there. You remember these, if you're old enough? I think back in the day, we called this um, liquid embroidery. My mother used to do this. And it's these pens, and they've got oil oil paint in them. And, you know, a little, it's almost like a ballpoint pen nib, and you press down and squeeze, and then you paint. And I remember doing this when I was a kid, you know, and she'd have those iron-on transfers, she ironed it onto some fabric, and then she put it on this big embroidery hoop that was solid, you know, it wasn't hollow in the middle, it had a metal thing on it with the blotter thing, and, and then we did this, and it was fun. And I tested it out a little bit, just a little quick doodle, and I really, you know what, the really the only reason I bought them, I was curious to see if they still smelled like they used to. These things, were all kinds of toxic, I'm sure, because they smell like gasoline, benzene, toluene, xylene, you know, all of those other carcinogens. And I don't know, you know, it contains cancer, probably. I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, super toxic, and, and I was pleasantly surprised that they do still smell super toxic, which was awesome. It's one of those nostalgic things. You know, like a box of crayons. I love the smell of a box of crayons. I promise I'm not locking myself in a closet and sniffing, you know, toxic paints. I promise I'm not. I, I'm in a well-ventilated room sniffing toxic paints. <laughs> but they are, they just kind of brought back memories and it was fun. So I grabbed them and the box was like $8. It used to be 22 used to be 22 and it was 827 for eight colors. It's a buck each. It's oil paint. You know, I'll use it. So that was kind of fun. And then right next to that, I bought something. Again, I don't know why, but I just did. It's a, um, it's an apron. Yeah, I don't wear aprons, but it's cute. Look at this little ruffle. And it was 359 on clearance. And I thought I might could paint it with my little toxic ballpoint paints or even doodle on it or something and even if I don't wear it I can just hang it in my kitchen for something decorative uh, okay fine it was an impulse purchase I don't know what I was thinking so we have that um, they also had a whole bunch of paint on their clearance rack they had some sets and some individuals they have acrylics they had oils they had some watercolor sets bunches of brushes so I grabbed these acrylics, just some, you know, some colors that I liked and use a lot. They were um, two fifty one regularly, about six bucks. So that was a good deal on two paints. And let's see, it's just another one of those things that I have not yet revealed to myself exactly why I bought it, but I did. Therefore, I'm sure I need it. It says image album, and it looks to me like it's supposed to be used as a scrapbook or something. Although, as far as scrapbooks go, it's kind of butt ugly, but I don't know what the thing is. Here's, here's why I bought it. Well, I don't really know why, but here's what drew me to it. Okay, it holds 12 by 12, 
It's got, you know, these little sheet protector sleeves, but inside each sheet protector sleeve thing are two of these clear do wallies. And they've got notches, four notches on them, four, not notches, but slits, so that you can put an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper on it and then stick it in your 12 by 12 sleeve. Okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these clear things, but I just feel certain that I need them. Um, I know I can mono print on them. I don't know if I can get the silly thing back in there. I'm still in my jammies, by the way. Don't judge me. It's early still. Okay. Um, I know I can mono print on them, but there's probably something else I can do with them too. So I felt for you know it was like 7.51 or something. Um, I felt that was probably worth my money. And and then I thought later what I could do is do like um, who was it? Tanya Gibbs maybe? I think it was Tanya who used a 12 by 12 album to store her uh, templates, you know, her stencil things, which I thought was genius. That never occurred to me, but you know, it's perfect, you know, because some of them are the 12 by 12 size. You just stick them in an album and there you go. So I thought this might be good for that, and especially because of, I guess you're supposed to really throw this away. That's probably just for display, but I can hang this in my closet, you know, on a, a skirt hanger thing and store my templates right there just like that. So maybe that's why I bought it and I just didn't realize it. I don't know. Anyway, that's what I got at Hobby Lobby. They had some good stuff, or ours did. Um, oh, and I got this bucket. Um, can you tell? You know, it's one of those. And Okay, I've got several of these. So I don't know that I really needed this. You know what? I did need it because the other ones I have like this I have stuff in them. They're full of stuff. Like, I use them. So I needed this. Yes, I did. I certainly did. And it was $6. So I needed another $6 bucket with these cool handles. So that's what I got. So, I'm all stocked up, shopped out, and ready for tomorrow. Um, that's, uh, yeah, that's all I have. So probably the next video will be some uh, footage of our little get together. I don't know that I will actually film. Some people are just not comfortable with the camera crammed in their face, you know, and I'm not going to make anyone uncomfortable. But at the very least, I'll take some still pictures and do a slideshow or something. So um, yeah, I can't wait for that. I'm, I'm really excited. So that's it for now. Until later. The end.